Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have two great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Old Entitled Jerk Got the Double Karma Whammy. So happy that I won't have to deal with cranky pants at work anymore. The second story. Escaping the chains of a toxic workplace. The first story is... Park Entitled? Hope you like paying. This just happened at my workplace. All names changed. For backstory, a coworker of mine, Amber, has been dating a bylaw officer, Greg, in the city where I live. When he takes his lunch break, he usually comes by to chat her up if she's on shift. Other than him, we don't get a lot of law enforcement out to our area of town very often. It's a normal day. I'm gathering up shopping carts in the parking lot. At our store, the area directly in front of the store is designated as a fire zone. There's yellow markings painted on the road surface denoting where the zone is, coupled with signs all along our storefront saying that it's a fire zone, and there is to be no parking or even stopping within it, and it's well away from any legitimate parking spots. Despite the markings though, and the signs, people still like to park there, usually just to go grab a few things. Sometimes one person will park there and their partner will hop out to go shopping. Every time I'm out there, grabbing buggies, I always walk over and tell them, hey look, this is a fire zone. If by law swings by, you could get fined or towed. Most people look at me like they expect me to pull a tow truck out of my back pocket and nail them right then and there. I usually have to follow up with, I'm just letting you know in case you didn't. If you want to park there, I'm not going to stop you, but it's your own fault if by law shows up. This is usually enough for most people to thank me for my diligence, park there anyway, and go inside. The odd person will snark back at me along the lines of, What? Do you think I'm blind? I know where I parked. And I just have to apologize over and over until they walk away. Today was different. This beat up old Ford comes in hard and almost squeals to a stop in the fire zone. I just happen to be passing by with carts, thankfully on the sidewalk. I don't want to imagine what might have happened otherwise, and I get his attention. He's easily north of 65 and probably enjoying his 70s. He's got a Friar Tuck haircut and whatever the male equivalent of resting bee face is. I can already tell, even as I'm opening my mouth, that this is probably a bad idea. It was just force of habit at this point. Excuse me, sir, this is a fire zone you've parked in. If bylaw comes by while you're inside, you could get fined or towed. He scowls at me. So, bylaw never shows up. Who the F do you think you are? The effing grocery police? I'm already adopting the customer service apology face. No, sir, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I was just... He cuts me off. You're GD right you aren't telling me what to do. I've been driving a car since you were a disappointing rut for your mother on prom night. I'll park any D well where I D well please and you're gonna do jack SH about it. Me trying again. Sir, I was only trying to tell you. Cut off again. He gets right in my face with a finger. You don't tell me GD anything. I tell you what's what and you get the F out of my way and go do your worthless minimum wage BS job for the rest of your miserable worthless life. All I can reply with is, yes sir. He puffs out his chest, glares at me and goes inside. I look up as he's leaving and who do I spot pulling in but Greg. I see his bylaw vehicle. I look at the truck, I smile. I practically sprint to him. He sees me coming. Hey OP, how's your day? Terrible, I reply, but hopefully about to get a whole lot better. Why's that? I point to the beat up Ford. This old a-hole just tore me a new one for trying to tell him he's parked in a fire zone. You mind giving him some karma? Greg grins. He loves sticking it to bullies. I can do that. He grabs his ticket book and heads over. It was hilarious. He started in on writing the ticket while I went about my business. The old guy takes his sweet time getting back out of the store, and he shows up just in time to see Greg slip the ticket under his wiper. I was inside the store at the time, so I didn't get to hear at all. But the old guy was screaming and cursing at the top of his lungs as Greg, who was responding to him in a composed manner, calmly explained the ticket process. He spoke to the guy for a few minutes, then went inside to see Amber. On his way in, I pass him by and say, Whatever you drink, let me know and I'll have a case of it waiting for you in the cooler next week. He just laughed, shook his head, and went inside. It wasn't much, just a $150 fine. But it felt so good. Episode 2. Guess who just came back to my store? Mr. Beat Up Ford, MBUF, pulls into the parking lot while I'm out getting carts earlier today. Seems like he's going for the fire zone, but then it happens. He spots me. So instead, he pulls into the handicapped parking spot. 
He tears out of his vehicle and speed walks slash runs over to me with just the meanest, nastiest scowl on his face. If he'd been strapped, I'm certain I'd be dead right now. MBUF. Hey you, you cost me $200, you effing P. Me. Oh, how did I do that? Sarcasm so thick you could feel it from 10 feet away. MBUF. You called that effing bylaw guy. You owe me $200. Suddenly his eyes light up. No F that. I'll just get you fired, you little snitch F. Me. Sir, I tried to warn you that you were parked in a fire zone. You were the one who wouldn't let me finish doing so. MBUF. Looking for all the world like he wants to just clean my clock. Bylaw never comes around here. You called him. You called him and you cost me $200. First, I'm going to get you fired. Then when you have no job, I'm going to sue you into bankruptcy. You're effing finished, you snitch MF. You just wait right here. Daddy has to go inside and teach you some effing manners. He storms off. Now, I'd like to say that Greg pulled in again and the guy got another ticket, but that's just not the case. It's not the case because Greg was already here inside talking to Amber. And hey, I didn't call him last time, but if I'm already a snitch MF to MBUF, why not live up to the role? So I sprint to get inside. MBUF is heading for the entrance, but I bypass him and go in the exit doors. Sure enough, Greg is in the middle of chatting with Amber near the registers. I rush straight up to him. Greg, oh hey OP, you're breathing pretty hard. Me, Greg, you remember that guy who parked in the fire zone nine months ago? Beat up old Ford in a bad attitude? Greg, how could I forget? He had some creative insults. Hard to forget a gentleman like that. Why do you ask? Me, guess who's back in the parking lot? Greg, you're SHing me. In the fire zone again? Me, no, he's in a handicapped spot. Would you be cool with going out and just double checking, finger air quotes that he has a placard? Greg turns back to Amber. You mind if I go check this out? Amber, go for it. I'll see you after my shift. A quick peck on the cheek and he's out of there with me hot on his heels. He darts to his car to grab his ticket book then heads for the Ford. I go back to carts. This time I'm outside when MBUF comes back, manager in tow. I'm just starting to push a line of carts towards the store when MBUF comes out. He sees me and gets a triumphant glare on his face, but then immediately catches sight of Greg writing in his ticket book and he goes white. Then right back to red. He storms over to Greg, and I surreptitiously have some trouble with my carts. One of them is locked, I think, so I have to check each cart. All while standing no more than 10 feet away from this scene. What a dink. MBUF to Greg. You, what the F are you doing? Greg, sir, do you have your handicap placard on you? MBUF, what? No, I left it at home. Greg, sir, you're parked in a handicapped parking spot. If you don't have a placard, I'm gonna have to ticket you. MBUF, that's BS, I have a placard. Greg, do you have any proof of that on you? MBUF, no. Greg in his best I'm so sorry for your lost voice. Well then I'm afraid I have to cite you, sir. If you do have a placard, you can come to court and present it and the citation will be voided. MBUF, F that, I'll just move. Greg, I'm sorry, sir, but your information is already entered on the ticket. Even if you drive away now, the citation will be mailed to you. MBUF looks triumphant. You don't know where I live. You're not mailing me SH. Greg, sir, I've copied down your license plate. I can find your mailing address by looking up your details in the system. MBUF, getting angrier than I've ever seen anyone get in my entire life. Now you listen here, you snot-nosed little effer. You're gonna tear up that ticket and F right off or I'm gonna make you regret it. Greg, sir, do you want me to cite you for disorderly conduct? At this point, MBUF seemingly gives up and turns his attention back to me. At that precise moment, I find the lock cart, get it unlocked and start going about my duties again. It should be noted that my manager was present for this entire encounter, both Greg's and mine. He just had the wherewithal not to say anything during MBUF's confrontation with Greg. MBUF pointing to me. There's the guy. That's the effing little snitch I was talking about. Manager, semi teen up, could you come over here for a second? Me. Sure, boss, what's up? Manager, this gentleman claims you were rude to him. What's your side? MBUF, he called me every name in the book. Then when I told him off for being a piece of SH, he called bylaw on me. I want him fired. Manager, sir, I've heard your side of the story. Please let my employee speak. MBUF, what's the effing point? He'll just lie his little snitch MFA off. Just effing fire him. This is twice now he's been a little PAB and snitched on me. Manager, sir, please tone down the profanity. I understand that you're angry, but I'm not going to fire my employee without hearing his side of the story. MBUF looks really fed up at this point, but closes his mouth. Manager, so semi teen up, what did you say to him? Me, today or nine months ago? Manager, today. Me, well, he accused me of costing him $200. 
I asked him how did I do that. He claimed I snitched on him to buy law. I tried to explain that when I first talked to him nine months ago, I was only trying to warn him that he was parked in a fire zone. He didn't let me finish and, might I add, verbally berated me for attempting to warn him. MBUF. That's an effing lie. You called me every insult under the sun. Me. Got any examples of what I said? If I was that rude to you, surely you remember what I said specifically. MBUF. You, uh, you said, well, uh, it was nine months ago. I can't even remember what was said nine months ago. Me. Really? Because I perfectly remember you telling me, and I quote, I've been driving since you were a disappointing rut for your mother on prom night. MBUF. Well, I effing have, and you effing were. Me. So you're saying you remember what you said to me, but you don't remember what I said to you? MBUF. Angry sputtering. Manager clearly wising up to how two-faced this soured old B is. Sir, if you'd like to file a complaint against my employee, you're entitled to do so, but... MBUF. GD right I want to file an effing complaint. Manager. But you would be alone in doing so. I'll investigate his conduct today. You have my word on that, but there isn't enough evidence to fire him based only on your word. MBUF seething with rage. Well, he's still a little snitch MF. Me. Sir, I never called bylaw on you. A bylaw officer knows someone who works here and he visits when he's on break or after his shift. It's not my fault that you showed up when he was here twice. Nor is it my fault that you parked illegally twice. MBUF. You shut the F up, you son of a B. Your effing mother was a W and your daddy was her effing pimp, you worthless, pointless piece of SH. Manager. Sir, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave the premises. I won't allow customers to verbally abuse my employees. MBUF. Effing fine. I'll come get groceries when this little sea stain isn't on shift. Manager. No, sir. I'm gonna have to ban you entirely. This level of disrespect is unacceptable. MBUF. The F you say? I live two minutes away from here. I ain't going somewhere else for my GD groceries. Manager. Well, sir, you'd best get someone to do your shopping for you. If I see you in here again, you will be removed from the premises in handcuffs for trespassing. MBUF starts to say something, somehow manages to think better of it, climbs into his truck and squeals out of there. Me. Are you really going to investigate me for his complaint, sir? Manager. I was until he demonstrated there was no truth to it. He gives me some side eye. Were you rude to him? Me. Sheepish grin. I admit I might have added a dash of sass to my how did I do that. Manager, sheepish grin of his own. Well, might want to break that habit. It would get you into trouble one of these days. Me. Yes, sir. And for anyone who's wondering, while parking in a fire zone in my city is a $150 ticket, parking illegally in a handicap spot is $350. Enjoy that five to $600, P. The second story is, I just walked out of my job. Today I left my job because the owner decided it would be a good enough idea to berate me in front of my coworkers bringing up my IBS, and not working fast enough. No matter how fast I tried to work, it was never good enough for the nepotistic megalomaniac. My IBS has been an issue my whole life and it's gotten worse over time. It made me miss work and come late a few times, but the owner didn't give an F at all. The first time I told him he didn't show me an iota of empathy, he just told me I needed to manage it better and that I would need a doctor's note next time after scoffing at me. I told the P I would see a doctor when insurance kicked in, a week from now, but he seemed to forget that. Anyways, he pulled me and everyone else to the side to yell at me and told me that if I don't do what he wants then I need to walk out, so I told him I would take him up on his offer. Then he tried to intimidate me and he follows me around as I gather my things. He's ranting about something but I pretty much stopped caring about anything he had to say because I was mentally done and just leaving. He then threatens to call the police all because I told him to get out of my face. <laughs> Eventually I got out and it was such a great feeling. I don't really have a plan at the moment, but right now I'm just glad to be free of that hellhole person. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.